Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything, and I'm coming to you from my computer desk, my uh, my flight desk, if you want to call it, uh, flight sim desk. Uh, what I uh, just received was my SciTech X55 in the mail. Um, it was waiting for me on my computer desk when I woke up this morning. I guess my wife put it there. Um, I do want to let you know that this is not a peripheral video. Uh, I'm doing, I am, I have a series of, oh, it's sort of a peripheral video. I'm doing a series of peripheral videos and one of them will be on the joysticks. Um, but, and this one will be part of it. But this video is a prelude to that. This is the unboxing of my X55 from SciTech, though I think they call it the Rhino. Um, let's go ahead and get to it, unbox it. I'm gonna give you my first impressions of it. We'll go over the uh, joystick in detail, but I'm not going to demonstrate it. What I'm going to do is just show you all the cool uh, features of it, and then we will, um, in my peripheral video, I will show you uh, it in use, and uh, so come back and view that video. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started doing that. Let's see here, let's go ahead and grab my box knife here. Let's grab the box itself, you know. Uh, there's an invoice on the side, but I already know what the invoice is gonna say. It's gonna say, you just received a box of awesome. Okay, so here we go. Let's go ahead and uh, I'll check the invoice if I feel there was anything missing. Or like that. All right, now, as you know, I am planning on using this, well, I'll use this for all my flight sims in the future, but the reason why I got it was for the upcoming release of Star Citizen. Star Citizen. Let's go ahead and put this, I'm gonna scoop my joystick, my joystick, duh, my keyboard into its little cubby along with the uh, SciTech Madcats Red 5. Okay, I'm gonna put that off to the side. Okay, well, there's obviously no room in the box. So when this thing comes in the box, it fills the box. That's a big box. But you know, boxes for joysticks usually are. Comes with a handle, like if you wanted to carry it over to your friend's house, okay? You, you're one of the, you're gonna go have a LAN party? Great way to carry your HOTAS system. Nothing else in the box. No packing uh, materials, no peanuts. Great, just a good box that I'm gonna be able to destroy. Because uh, we're taking the cardboard to the dump today, so I'll just go ahead and uh, recycle that. All right, here it is. It's pretty, pretty sizable. Okay, uh, X55 Rhino Hotel system. Okay, it comes with, and then it's got like a a clear view of the inside of the. Uh, Protest. Now let's go ahead and zoom this in so as I'm taking things out of the box, you can actually see what's going on. All right, well, here is the box system. Now let's uh, see, it looks like it's a nice sturdy box. Uh, let's open this bad boy up. X5, okay. The anticipation builds. SciTech Rhino Hotel System, hands-on throttle and stick. Got like a little manual here. Uh, goes A through K, telling you what the button areas are, and then it has nine different languages of uh, English, French, German, Italian, Spanish, Shoot, some of these I don't even know. Portuguese, Russian, what is that? It's maybe Scandinavian, maybe? Okay. Uh, it's cool. Okay, putting it off to the side, because that's not part of my first impression. That's, thank you, Rhino owner. Okay, cool. And then here is the packing material. Finally, there is packing material. And that, there's a top and a bottom, and that's it for the packing material. And then it comes in. That's not really true. It comes in plastic. Okay, I'm gonna set that off just to the side just for a second. Okay, that's the base for the joystick itself, I guess. Come 
comes with the extra springs, as we know. These uh, it can be multiple springs can be used depending on the tension level that you like. And there is the top. And then inside the box, there is nothing else except another one of those packing box materials. This is a nice box. It might still get recycled because I don't plan to uh, worry about that. It's just a beautiful box, though. Beautiful box to carry stuff in. I mean, you could probably carry stuff in this box. Store it in your garage and your shit, whatever. Okay, uh, let's put the springs off to the side. Take the plastic off. Yeah, in this video, I've started using my studio lights. Uh, I've had them. I used them in, at the other house. Uh, wow, this thing's pretty dang sexy. All right, this is light, like. And it ha okay, it's light. And it has a rubberized feel to it, like uh, you know, it feels like rubberized, which is pretty cool. Um, very lightweight, so hopefully it will blow. I guess those are connectors that go onto this plate right here that have a number of connector spots to control your different buttons and hat switches, you know. So that makes the actual electrical connection. Okay, that's pretty cool. Okay. Um, um, da -dum -dum. And then this is the throttle. Okay. All right, let's zoom it in just a little bit more so you can see what I'm looking at. Okay, let's take one thing at a time to look at. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the throttle itself. Um, okay, throttle is, whoa, okay, it needs to be more centralized. Cool. Okay, this throttle also has a rubberized feel to it. Um, and it moves very smoothly, slowly right now. But that's because I haven't adjusted any kind of tension on it right here. There's tension adjustment right here. I'm not really worried about the tension. Now I'm just gonna move both of them together. When I let go, it stays exactly where it needs to be. And I can pull it back. Hopefully it's very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not sensitive, maybe it is sensitivity. Hopefully, you know, every little bitty move like this is an actual point of throttle, you know what I'm saying? Like a percentage. Hopefully it goes from one to 100%, and maybe even, that's afterburners, maybe even a negative. Uh, so we'll see. And the reason why I say that is because I look down here and I see red markings, so I'm thinking afterburners, you know, whatever. Okay, so um, let's turn this so my hand can fit it. We've got a slider right here, which, I don't know what that's for, but you know, you can, uh, you just have a slider. You got a green button there, probably eject. It even has E on it. So I would assume this is my eject button. But hopefully I don't want my eject button like so easy to get to, you know, because I'm not, I don't want to accidentally like reach for one of these other buttons and accidentally just go bloop, eject myself. So I might have to uh, adjust what button that is. Uh, you, For those of you that don't know, you have, uh, which is really cool right here. You have different modes, mode one, mode two, mode three. Uh, so what that means is every single button that's on this thing or toggle switch or whatever, if I'm in mode one, I can have that those all preset to do certain things, right? And then when I go to mode two, they all can do something different. And then if I go to mode three, they all can do something different again. So that's just an infinite number of buttons uh, in my opinion. I probably won't be using all those. Uh, you do have a lock right here that you can unlock your throttle and now you have a two-sided throttle. Okay so you know you can go in either direction and if you just want to lock it back again just line them up and lock it and now you're locked again. That's awesome. Now you have like a little thumb what do they call it? Like a nipple. Uh, it's kind of like a little joystick. You can move something around with uh, your thumb right there. It's very small, very, you, bar you barely will even see it. And then these are hat switches. Uh, my understanding is they are eight point hat switches. And then you got another one there. So how many hat switches do you need? And then remember, this isn't even the joystick. This is the throttle. 
Then you got a spinner up here for, and it seems like, hold on. It has like a halfway setting. You can feel where the halfway setting is. And then you can go, it's also a button. Okay, that's cool. And then you have, these are um, reset to zero toggle. So you go toggle one and it goes back to zero, right? It doesn't stay toggled. So that could be an on and off. And this could be an on and off, you know, all the way down. And it does say one, two, three, four, well, one, two, three, four, five, six. Then you've got the same thing here. We got, these are SW, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, these are TGL or toggle, one through fours. Then you have RTY, three and four. Um, maybe that's radio dials or something, but these are dials that you can turn. And, you know, they have almost, they have like a 200, a little bit over 270 degrees worth of movement. Okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, this joystick does have uh, three, oh, sorry, four beveled holes. Not joystick. I keep saying joystick when this is really just a uh, throttle. But it does have four beveled holes here where you can actually, uh, like if you put it on a permanent desk like this and you want it to be permanent where it doesn't move anywhere at all, you can actually use some wood screws, screw it down into your desk, and this thing would never move, right? So if you wanted to make it a permanent fixture. But having said that, You've got these little rubber booties on the bottom right here, so when you've got it on your, like, I've got it on my table, which is uh, fairly smooth. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm cranking down on it. It's not really moving, you know, pulling back on it. Not left and right, not that I would be doing any left and right, shouldn't be doing any left and right. And then if I needed to toggle something, Uh, okay, so yeah, I feel those rubber booties are sufficient. This thing does have a little bit of weight, but it's pretty light, honestly. Okay, but I'm not finished. There are more buttons. Let's turn this thing around. No, wait, I forgot. We got this thumb button right here. It's also a, it's also a dial. Okay, it's a dial with a center spot and buttons. These toggles are not buttons. These are just hat switches. Okay. Turning it around. You do have another dial here. Okay. And most importantly, let's back this thing up. You've got buttons on your fingers right here. Okay. So when I'm flying, if I wanted to like drop chaff, I could push this. If I wanted to drop flares, and then I've got a third button over here, which is an up or down button. Uh, maybe I can adjust like my weapons or t to figure out what, I don't know. It's, a, it's an up or down, it's not a left. Hold on. Yeah, it's just an up or down kind of hat switch. One position down, one position up, kind of like a toggle. So you've got quite a bit of control. So while I'm flying, you know, what I could be doing is I could be adjusting my throttle, of course, you know. I could be adjusting my weapons, maybe with this thumb nipple uh, joystick, right? I could be finding my weapon systems. I, if I'm getting into an engagement, I can uh, af af slide this forward if I want afterburner, maybe uh, engage some kind of additional. Oh, you know what I could use this for? Maybe to go to... Uh, non-newtonian movement you know you got your newtonian movement and you got your non-newtonian movement or something like that you know i could i could use that and i've got my flares and i don't really think i yeah i guess they're gonna have chafe and flares or maybe it's just maybe it's just uh countermeasures you know and just push one button and then i have no idea what these dials would be for they're really uh a little bit extra super, superfluous something like that where there are just too many too many to be used okay it is USB, moving on. All right, let's talk about the joystick. I know this video's gone on, but it's exciting. Okay, this is the base of the joystick. Nothing super special, and, and you know, it's gonna look, because that's gonna go towards the computer, or towards your desk or whatever. Same thing, four holes, wanna screw it in, you can. 
It has those rubber booties, so it doesn't want to move around. It has a cool little, uh, cool little engraving right there. It says X55 Advanced Control Flight System Mach. I don't see where it says Rhino, but okay. Uh, all right, and then it just has some graphics on here, which is pretty cool. Remember, it comes with various springs. Okay, let's look at the control stick, at the, the yoke itself, okay? Um, you've got, okay, I'm a right-handed. It's built for the right-handed person because your thumb switch is right there. Um, but, and then you also have a pinky switch right there. You also have a pinky trigger back here. Pinky button, pinky trigger, uh, thumb button, and then of course the big trigger right there. Now I've got um, another E button right here. Don't know what that's going to do. Well, it says eight on it, I think is what it says, or maybe that's, who knows what that letter is. Is that a B or an eight? It looks like an eight. And then you got things that your thumb can do during, uh, you know, when you need to. Uh, you've got your, and these are all, sh these are all hat switches and they're all shaped differently. Okay. You've got concave and then you've got this, uh, you, you got this pyramid shaped one. You've got uh, a concave one, which is basically the reverse of this one right here. And then you've got one that's got kind of like four sides to it. And what that does is without you having to look down at your joystick, you know, without, you know, which one you're touching, you're touching this one or you're touching this one or you're touching that one, you know, so you know which one you're touching. So you don't have to uh, take your eyes off the target, right? And then you got this button right here. And then these are eight button joy uh, toggles and they're not a button. Nope, none of, them are none of them are buttons. Okay, they're just toggles, uh, hat switches. Okay, and then you got this button on the side I think I mentioned. Okay, uh, what was pointed out <laughs> on a video on, I watched Bridger and his uh, little week, uh, bi-weekly uh, show and uh, Calathulu has a, a, an X55 and he said, you know, he showed off this one little feature, which is kind of just funny to look at. But you know how on airplanes they have uh, they have protrusions that stick out little wings or antennas or something that might stick out of the side, and they put a, a, a label on it to prevent you from stepping on it and breaking it. It's called. It says no step. Well, this thing has a little no step right there on the step and they made a comment about how the only person that's gonna be stepping on that is like a little munchkin but yeah it's just funny it is looking cool okay now this would normally go in there and you would just tighten it up with a spring and that spring would determine like how okay well first of all why wouldn't this oh maybe that's the weakest no, I don't know. It already has, okay, but it already has super tension. Okay, let's take this lid off. Okay, after removing the tape, you just pull the lid off, and then you have these multiple springs inside. Uh, they are of different lengths, which is going to tell you pretty much how tight the tension is. Uh, they appear to be different diameters of metal, too. Let me take a look real quick look at that. Nah, they're so similar. It's, it, I guess it's just the length, and they are color coded red, green, red, yellow, and blue. Um, that's so that you know that. But the red one is the shortest one, which is kind of funny because I would think that the tallest one would have the most tension, and the uh, shorter one would have the least amount of tension. That's what I would think. Right? All right, guys, we're talking about the springs, and I. I <clears throat> The uh, manual doesn't really explain it, so I actually had to go to the SciTech website and look at the tutorial and figure this out. Okay, you have a tension, you have a, uh, what do they call it, a, uh, a ring that goes on here that holds, this ring holds the, what they call the spring tensioners in place. So I take the retaining ring off just by popping it straight up 
and yeah, it's tight. It'll pop right off, okay? What that's doing is it's holding these two halves of this ring. I thought you unscrewed it or something, but what you do is you just pull them straight out, and they just slide right out, okay? Now, you do, I think you just need to be a little careful when sliding the other one out, or your spring is going to go crazy. Yeah, there you go. And then, uh, so you just take your spring out. This is the green one, which is the longest one. So that is why it was as tight as it was. Okay, it was tight. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, lower it down to the blue one just to, uh, just because, just because, you know. And then I guess we have to pull the spring down with our fingers and then slide the spring tensioners back into place, as they call them, spring tensioners. Basically, they're just clips. Okay, that's cool. And then the the uh, donut ring will go back on top, snapping it in place. Then we take our joystick, we line it up the way it's supposed to be, because there's a little groove here, and a little groove in the back. There's a groove back and a little groove in the front. You gotta line it up. There you go. It falls into place. And then you just twist the uh, nut down onto the joystick my understanding and then okay that that is kind of loose I wonder if you can put two springs on there I bet you can I bet you I could put the yellow one and the red one together on there and really make like a super tight spring but uh, what I'm gonna do yeah that's kind of loose uh, I did like the extremely tight okay so let's try it unscrew this bad boy and it should just come right off it's not like it's got any pressure on it because all the pressure is on that so then we pop the donut pull the spring tensioners off take this one off and let's put this hmm. yeah I bet you I could do two springs if I had to if I really needed it to be that tight You know, some guys like it tight. Boom, it's in there. Okay. Line those holes back up. Yep, it fell right into place. And let's just tighten it up. And I don't think you have to tighten it all the way up. Once it hits the bottom, you're good. Still not that tight. You know, uh, these springs are a little looser than normal, or a little looser than what kind of what I'm expecting, but that's okay. It's not. That's yeah, pretty awesome, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, it's pretty good. And it bounces right back to the center because the uh, spring puts the pressure on this uh, flat plate right here. So when you move it, what happens is it lifts that flat plate up, and it's causing tension on the spring. And then the spring brings that flat plate back down to a resting position, so your joystick will always return to the center. Okay, there is a twist. There is twist on the joystick. That I'm going to have to use for my rudders. Even in Star Citizen, I know people say you probably could use it for your up and down uh, vectors, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use it for my rudder because it's traditional. <laughs> I didn't put that back on. What the heck? Am I like space casing it? Space casing it. Let's put this ring back on. Cause that might have something to do. That might have a little bit to do with it. Might not. Cause it is below what the joystick is. Yeah, it's no difference. All right, well, that was the unboxing of my Rhino X55 and HOTAS system. And I think it's going to be extre extremely cool to play with this on some flight sims until Star Citizen comes out, which is just in a couple of days. If it's not tomorrow, it's the next day. So, uh, yeah, I don't see, I, I foresee myself doing extremely well with this. Yeah, I might have to move this a little bit off to the left and bring this off to the center. Yeah, there we go. All right, guys. 
Uh, next video should be uh, the unboxing and reveal of my Track IR. Come back and check that out.